Welcome to this Bridgewater Now update. I'm John Luck. Marijuana discussions returned to the council chambers during the June 26th meeting, and the council spent nearly two hours discussing a zoning ordinance that would limit the number of marijuana distributors to two and would limit the number of operations to two as well. ACS and Theory Wellness would be able to do two of the following, cultivate, manufacture, or test. The council discussed the ordinance looking to pass it. However, by doing that, there was a potential on leaving the door open for testing sites in town in the future. Janice Gallagher said a testing facility is something that should be strived for with two marijuana facilities in town already. To me, if there's anything we should have in town is the testing facility. If we're going to be growing it and making it and <clears throat> two doing all that, there, sh there should be some checks and balances perhaps in our town. So if there's anything we should try to strive for in our community because of the facilities that we have and what it looks like they may apply for is maybe a, a place that doesn't grow it, doesn't sell it, but tests the stuff that we're making here. After the lengthy discussion, the ordinance was eventually postponed, bringing it back to the subcommittees to rewrite it, this time without the testing facilities. Bill Wood said by doing this, the town is backtracking from what they did in December. It <coughs> seems that at that point, no one could decide that they wanted to limit cultivation to the Elm Street overlay. And it was an oversight during the process that didn't, didn't, didn't put it there. And so it could be in one of the other industrial parks under the current language. And we, we, we went through many hearings to reach that decision. So I don't understand why we're backtracking now to undo that decision to redo this again. This is like our fourth attempt at banning marijuana in town. We'll have much more on this on Bridgewater Review coming up next month. An Atlanta man who experienced the effect the opioid crisis can have on a family brought his story to Bridgewater. Brett Bramble and John Azzarolo had been on a walk that has lasted more than 150 days and traveled more than 1,900 miles. January 27th, we started walking from Key West, Florida, and we're uh, attempting to go all the way to Fort Kent, Maine. Um, we're now here in Massachusetts. We're about three quarters of the way in to our walk, and we're doing this for drug overdose awareness. Four years ago, I lost my sister Brittany to heroin overdose. Losing, losing my sister devastated our family. This was part of the Friends of Emmett group that meets at Trinity Episcopal Church on the last Wednesday of every month. And the purpose of, of doing this is to let people know that no matter where they are in their journey, whether they're in active addiction, they're in recovery, they or an affected family member, that they're welcome here. And that there's, there's a spot for them to feel like they can just talk about what's going on in their life and just be themselves without worrying about the stigma associated. We'll have more from Brett's visit to Bridgewater coming up in July. Taking a check of weather and get ready to crank those ACs as by the time we get to the weekend, we may see our first heat wave of 2018. Now, of course, for heat wave, temperatures have to be at or above 90 for three days. And we should have no problem with that as we see low 90s from Saturday to Tuesday. Now, to go along with the temperatures, we'll see the humidity and dew points skyrocket as well, sending the heat indices, meaning what it'll feel like, into the triple digits. So for those with respiratory or health issues, you're going to want to take it easy and drink plenty of water. Welcome to BTV Now Sports. I'm Brian Burrard. The Brockton Rock season is now in full swing as the Rocks are now four games back of first place Martha's Vineyard. The Rocks have had a bit of a rough patch going 4-6 and six in their last 10 and are currently on a three-game losing skid. BTV had the opportunity to broadcast Monday night's game versus the Worcester Bravehearts on National Night Out for recovery. The Rocks dropped this one 5-1 to one and couldn't mount any offense against Northeastern sophomore Henry Ennin, and it went six strong innings allowing no runs on six hits and six strikeouts. The Rocks got their only run in the bottom of the eighth when Zach Galoff scored on a throwing error. And sticking with baseball here, as former BR baseball standout and Virginia Tech Hokie Joe Friday signed a professional contract to play for the St. Louis Cardinals. Friday went undrafted in this year's draft, but was signed to a free agent contract to play on the Cardinals' rookie ball team. He got his first action playing against the Washington Nationals' rookie ball team last Tuesday. Friday was named the Massachusetts Gatorade Player of the Year in 2014 and was a part of the 2013 Division I state championship team at BR. And finally, former BR Football Hall of Famer Mark Colombo was elected into the Boston College Varsity Club Hall of Fame. Colombo was a four-year starter at BC and went on to play in the NFL for the Bears, Cowboys, and Dolphins. That's all we have for BTV Now Sports. 
I'm Brian Berard. Finally, today you saw on the BTV Facebook page that Paul Sullivan passed away on Monday at the age of 75. Paul was extremely active in his service to the town of Bridgewater, serving as town administrator, town counselor, chair of the board of selectmen, chair of the planning board, and served on the board of directors right here at BTV. Paul played an important role in turning the studio into a nonprofit. Mr. Sullivan was survived by his wife, three children, and five grandchildren. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Sullivan family.